couple of weeks ago, we had a nice gentle rain and it was just a nice rainy day. And I couldn't remember the last time that had happened. Usually whenever it rains now, it just comes in torrents and floods. And we really have to guard against that in, in all sorts of ways. The water from that slope just comes in and hangs up. You can see it in the vegetation where all the sedges start. You know, we don't get good forage grasses until we start going up the slope and there's some drainage there. This is real heavy bottom land down in here. And then just a little bit up, we have a nice glacial lacustrine deep soil where we used to keep the berries. But that was the only part of the farm that was fit for that use. The strawberries can be real hit or miss some years if you have a lot of wet weather, especially since we do pick your own strawberries. We need sunny weekends with lots of berries. And if we can get two or three of them, we have a really good year. If we only get one sunny weekend with, that coincides with the peak fruiting, then we have a bad, you know, a poor season. Our strawberry season used to start, typically when I first got into the business, it started around this time of year on the first day of summer. Anywhere the 19th to the 20th would be our opening date for UPIC. It's been back and forth and kind of erratic, but I've had years when the season started in May and was done before June ever arrived. We always think of May 15th being our official start of our growing season and no frost warnings need to be made after that kind of thing. Um, but that's, you know, advanced almost to the first of May instead some years. We've changed from a zone four to almost a zone five in this area right in here. We started growing the grapes. We've had really very little problem with a crop that we generally would have considered requiring too much heat for this area. The reason we bought the hoop house was for season extension so that we could grow things in the winter time. As it turns out, it's been even more important for climate control, essentially, and growing things in the summer um, under cover. So we bought it for one reason, but you know, the, the, actually, the climate reason has been the more important um, asset. We can grow the tomatoes without any spray of any kind in the greenhouse, and you're watering from the bottom, so there's no moisture on the leaves, and you don't get blight. And the tomatoes are by far more profitable than the winter greens, as it turns out. The dairy is a different business in terms of, basically animal agriculture will shield you from some of these temperamental weather and other risk related things. The, the risk management of dairy is not as complex as vegetable farming in terms of you spreading out your risk. And our two biggest crops are the milk and the strawberries. The cows are a great buffer against the weather because they don't care if it's raining or pouring and they can graze no matter what. We get at least seven months, seven months of grazing, if not more. We're putting them out in April and we're usually grazing into December um, unless there's early snow. And then we just start feeding a little hay because usually it'll melt off and we can get going again. You gonna drive the tractor for me? Hey, your wagon keeps on hitching. You gotta go, man. My main coping strategy is always seeing a way to manage this resource and manage the risks of this resource in the best possible way. That's a nice one, sweetie. Here in Climate Change Projections, I really believe in building this farm for many, many generations, and I, I envision you know, I talk about planting things and trees and things that probably will never really come to their full maturity until after me, even. I feel like the best way to prepare for the future is just to really take care of this piece of land. Keep these acres, you know, healthy and, um, and thriving and always growing. The best way to prepare for the future is just to, to keep trying, investing in one piece of ground, you know, and managing it really well. Farms aren't built in a single person's lifetime. They really aren't. Um, they, t they need generations in order to really become 
fruitful.